What's going on, YouTube? Mr. Tony's Hip Hop School is back and in full effect. Remember when we used to say, in full effect? <laughs> Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Like, share, subscribe. Like, share, subscribe. Please do that. Don't just listen to me say, like, share, subscribe. Ooh, he said, like, share, subscribe. That sound funny. Can you just do it, please? Thank you. Anyway. A lot of these videos I've been doing just off the top of my head. Some I've written down stuff. Some I just do. Sometimes I'm sleepy as hell and I'm still able to remember things. I really do need to jot down things though because I need to go over the albums and all that. But this video is all about hip hop producers and I'm probably going to go further back. And this is off my head. Um, there's one that I can think of that he don't get a lot of. Now, see, I don't watch TV much anymore. So I don't know what they... I, I, I'm pretty sure they don't talk about this dude. And it's a whole bunch of them. When it comes to producers, the main people you'll hear about is Dr. Dre and DJ Premier. Rightfully so, those are good ones. The matter of fact, they may be the greatest producers, hip hop producers of all time. They're neck and neck. I mean, most people are gonna get an edge to, to Dre because, see people, see this is my thing. People go by, um, put that way. people go by um, record sales. You know, and then he was with Death Row, and I, and look, he he was great. I have no problem with if somebody said he was number one. I don't have a problem with that. But DJ Premier ain't no slouch neither, and it's all it's all about your style. Now I like both styles. I like I like Dre. And I like Premier. I like Premier more because I'm East Coast. I'm from the East Coast. So I like Dre's, I mean, I like Premier's cutting style. I like the way he cut. Now I've been following him ever since 1988, when him and Guru came out, when they first came out with the words I manifest. That, that album, No More Mr. Nice Guy, is one of my favorite hip hop albums of all time too. And most people will listen to that album and be like, what's the big deal? But for me, I fucking love that album. I love Guru, I love Premiere, you know? But I mean, I like Dre too. You know, like when you listen to the first, um, the first few NWA albums, my favorite album that they did was Niggas for Life. That's my favorite NWA album. And that was with Ice Cube. Ice Cube wasn't even in the group, but that shit, man, fucking the, the, the beats on that shit, man, that shit, man. Plus, man, like when you mad at a female, that's like the best music to listen to. I know a lot of females don't agree with that because they call them women bitches and all that shit. But, you know, don't you, when you get mad at your man, don't you curse them out? You know, and it ain't like I'm cursing somebody out. I'm just listening to motherfucking curse about a woman. But Dre probably should get the edge. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, for me, it would be Premier. Pete Rock up there too. But for me, it's just too many to mention. I mean, it's just way too many. It's just so many people that I like as far as music production. I can go Eric Sermon. I can go Large Professor. I can go Howie, I can go um, Howie T. I mean, Herbie Lovebug, I'm sorry. I can go to Herbie Lovebug. I can go to Molly Mall. I can go to RZA. I can go to LES. I mean, it's just, the, the, the list is just, forever when it comes to music production because I was a beat dude. I love beats. Uh, Q-Tip. Q 
Q-Tip is like, he's definitely in my top five as far as production. You know, I mean, I can just go on and on and on. I can go, um, the boy that made the beats for, um, the sugar, like, Sugar Hill Records, um, damn, Larry Robinson. Because he made, like, Houdini's beats. He made a lot of the beats. Oh, you can do Rick Rubin for Run DMC, LL Cool J. But uh, Larry Robinson, he don't, he gets no, he gets no mention. And those were hip-hop classics. All that Sugar Hill shit, he made all that shit. He made the majority of it. He gets no... He he made some of the fat boys... Well, what's the name did too? Um, Curtis Blow. Curtis Blow was a, was a producer. People don't even know that shit. Curtis Blow made a lot of fucking... The songs... Like, even when um, that movie came out, uh, Crush Groove, they even mentioned it in that. That he was producing a lot of the songs. Man, these motherfuckers don't get no fucking recognition. None. None. Grandmaster Flash. They people look at him as just scratching, but Grandmaster Flash was a producer too. He gets no mention. It's it's just that's what's so sad about the hip hop, old school hip hop, because there's so many people that don't get recognized. They get no recognition whatsoever. Teddy Ted. Motherfuckers don't even know who Teddy Ted is. Teddy Ted was a producer. Back in the 80s. He did a lot of remixes and shit. He did a lot of them. But he did a lot of he, he did a lot of production like with the audio too. He did a lot of shit like that. He nobody talks about Teddy Ted. Like Teddy Ted, who the fuck is that? You know what I'm saying? It's 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 just, it's a shame. Cause it's so much, man. And that and I like I dig deep, bruh. I like I like listening to a lot of shit most people don't listen to. You know what I mean? Like, I used to be a huge, and this is going to go into another producer that I like. I used to be a huge Ultra Magnetic fan. The Ultra Magnetic MCs. And one of their rappers, Said G, was a producer. Said G was the one that um, started the. Uh, Damn, oh shit. He started it. Um, it was a way that you could um, sample shit. Like I know one of them uh, sample machines, you can only sample something for like a half a second or some shit or, or a second and a half. And he made it where you can sample the shit for like five seconds or eight seconds, some shit like that. I know I'm in the right ballpark, but I, I, it's something like that. I know I should, I'm supposed to, I did research it, but I just, it was a while ago when I did it. Because I actually watched an uh, interview with said G talking about it. And he made a lot of music for different people as well, but predominantly for, mainly for Ultra Magnetic. But he did a few other people too. Said G. Said G the champion. But my one of my favorite all time producers is Marley Maul. Marley Maul is one of my favorite producers of all time because I used to like the way he scratched. I used to like, and then I used to like the Juice Crew. I used to like MC Shan, Biz, Big Daddy Kane, Roxanne Shante. I used to like all of them. It's, it's a it's a whole bunch more, but. Cool G rap. I used to like them, man. You know what I'm saying? And and, and Marley Maul, he just I just used to like his beats, man. You know, the beats was all that. And then, you know, Big Daddy Kane came along. And, you know, like Big Daddy Kane is like one of, he's one of my favorite rappers of all time because Man, I used to listen to him so much. Not just sound like I'm all on his jock and all that shit, but shit, fuck that. That motherfucker could rap his ass off. Cause I used to like his style, man. Plus, I like, like when I was younger, I was a, not a braggadocious, but I was cocky. I was arrogant. 
And I kind of like that on a rapper. I, if a rapper gonna be a rapper, you better be arrogant, motherfucker. You better act like you the best one out here. And I and that's what he was, man. You know, but Molly, Molly did the beats. You know, I, I man, Molly Maul is one of my favorite rappers. I mean, hip hop um, producers of all time, man. Sorry, y'all. I'm a little sleepy. Um, but this hip hop, old school hip hop, man, has to be cherished if you love old school. Because it's just so, it's just so much stuff that hasn't been tapped into. Because if you listen to the radio, now they, now they, they might have like that, uh, you know, when you're driving home from work, they got the little, the shows. I'm sure they do it all over the fucking country where they play a lot of the deep. They go, they dig in the crates and they play some. But what I'm saying is these motherfuckers ain't never recognized, you know. Like, I don't think I've ever seen Molly Maul interviewed. You know what I mean? They interview these dickhead motherfuckers that's out now. Motherfuckers with all these flame girly names and Juicy J and all. Like, come on, man. But you ain't gonna, you're not gonna interview a legend, Molly Maul, Teddy Ted. They might, they might interview RZA, but it's not gonna be for his fucking music. It's gonna be for, it's gonna be for his acting. You know what I'm saying? Like certain people just don't want to see black people great, man. But I look at but I look at us as kings and queens and I look at us as great. You know what I mean? We just been pushed, we just got a foot on our neck right now. But it's about to be pulled off. The Molly Maul. My that's my man right there. Molly, yes. DJ Premier, yes. All everybody that I mentioned. Yes. Dre, yes. You know what I mean? It's a lot of them, man. Eric Sermon is up there for me. Eric Sermon is one of my favorite, but Molly Maul is like, he's like one of the founding fathers of, of hip hop production. And he gets no mention. He, you might hear his name because of a famous song, maybe because of Roxanne Chante, maybe because of Biz Markey, maybe because of Big Daddy King, you know, MC Shan. But, he, you know, it ain't, it's just because of that. They ain't, they're not going to like, you know, they're not going to give him his props, but I'm giving him his props. And I think that I'm going to do another video about my top, nah, I, see, I can't do no list, man. I, if I do a list of, of producers, that shit, it's going to be like top 20, and I'll have to do like five different videos. But I think I'm going to break it down, like all the albums, all that shit. I'm going to start doing that anyway. I just, it's just, I don't have enough time. I got to do this within 15 minutes. So, but I'll, I'll do another video about Marley Mall. I'll also come up to like the 2000s. Cause I know my, a lot of y'all not my age. So he's like, man, I don't want to hear no fucking Molly Maul shit in the 80s shit. I don't want to hear that shit. But I got to I gotta talk about all hip hop. Hip hop started in 78. Technically, it started in 74. Then it took flight in 78. You heard it from me. That's when the shit started hitting the radio. So, but anyway. Please like, share, subscribe. I'll keep doing more videos. Um, but I, I need I need more likes, more views. I need the, I need these videos shared. I need to hear back from people. I'm very curious if it's, if I'm missing something. I'm very curious to know, um, you know, who's your favorite this and that. You know what I mean? It might be something I'm missing. Just like I I fucked up big time with uh, groups. The two, the two in a group, I never said Eric B and Rakim. So I, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. Because that was like, I need to get shot for that shit. Eric B and Rakim is up there. I never mentioned them. So I apologize for that. But I'm going to come back and do another video about that. And probably just go into them a little bit more. But please like, share, subscribe. I'll have more videos for all the ones that have been asking me to do more. I'm going to do more. 
and peace.